Oh, I really don't think you have any idea how excited I am. Oh yes, we're gonna flip flip this over because you guys, you guys don't need to know my address. I don't think you need to know it. You might want it, but you can't have it. This MacBook Pro, this is, it's the higher of the two that you kind of get online with no customizations. So the only real difference is it has the 512 gig hard drive, but eight gigs of RAM and that's it. No updates, no upgrades. That's, that's all. So I wanted to put this, and we're gonna do it in a future video. We're gonna put it up against my 16 inch MacBook Pro i9 with 32 gigs of RAM. And that one is kind of souped up a little bit. And I'm also gonna put it up against my uh, 2020 27 inch iMac with 64 gigs of RAM i7, which actually just kind of eats my MacBook. So we're gonna, we're gonna crack this open and we're going to see what comes in the box and we're gonna run through the setup. So for those of you that are new to Apple, and this is possibly your very first MacBook ever, we're gonna show you how to set it up, and at least what it looks like, and uh, kind of go from there. All right, guys, coming up. Did I, did I say this was exciting? In regards to the setup of this, I'm probably, no, I'll probably be setting it up as new, but again, I am coming from a previous MacBook, so I do have a lot of iCloud features that are gonna kinda kick in. Something there floating around. Kick in, and because of that, uh, a lot of my stuff is gonna just automatically come through, but I'm, I'm very curious to see if the new system does anything differently. All right, so here it is. This side of the box, the other side, is where like your address is. And this is what you get when you order one online. Nice little brown box. That goes down, this goes up. And it's a little weird because I'm moving from a 16 down to a 13. Okay, there it is. You guys see that? Of course you can see that. That's, that's the magic right there. It's so little feels little when you're used to, like I said, a 16 inch. But we wanted to downsize because I'm not using my MacBook Pro as much anymore because of my iMac. And this we wanted more for travel and we do find the 16 inch, at least I find, that having to carry it around all the time, it, it does definitely get heavy. So that, that can become an issue if you're actually using a laptop or a MacBook for travel, right? All right, so in the bottom here, just so you guys can see it, there's a little pull tab because they try to make it as easy as possible. They want to make the opening experience really nice as well. So that just kind of pulls off like that, floats around, and off it comes. One nice fluid motion. You don't have to use a knife or get your fingernails in there or anything like that. And then, once you're here, let gravity do its job. So all you're doing is just pulling, nice and slow. Gravity will open the box for you. Well. Oh, I have to say, after, I don't even know how many years anymore I've been on a Mac, uh, 17 years, 17 years. It's still always exciting to open one of these. You get a pull tab right here. This is what lifts it up. We'll just put this off to the side. Inside, you're gonna get your uh, USB-C. So it's a USB-C to USB-C. That's gonna be your power cable. In here is all your reading material and a sticker, if that's of importance to you, because you wanna advertise that you're an Apple user. And this is gonna be your, your power brick. So on side, inside here, just so you guys can see it, this opens up. And a lot of people ask this, uh, this piece here, so this is your North American, but if you ever travel anywhere, you can get, there may be some third party ones, but you can get the Apple ones. And basically what happens is this pops off and allows you to put different universal ends on it so that if you're going somewhere that doesn't have this, you're going to Europe, you're going to Africa, you're going to wherever, you can get the different end, just kind of slide that back on there. The actual power brick will do all the wattage and voltage and amperages, all that kind of stuff. So all you need is, is the end. So very cool. All right, and really that's it. That's all, that's, that's your unboxing. You know, it's laid out, it's always laid out. They do a super good job with layout and they make it nice and easy. Um, I would like to, I don't know if it's it's possible. It would be nice for them to somehow make a smaller 
one of these, but maybe it has to be that big for the amount of power it's getting. I don't know what wattage this one is. It looks fairly big, so my guess is gonna be a 60, 65, somewhere in that range. Okay, here this is. So Apple logo goes away from you because it's gotta be upright for those that are watching you at the coffee shop. When you're sitting there hanging out being like, yeah, that's right, I run a, I run a Mac product. I'm all Apple. Just let me just throw my money around because cha-ching, cha-ching, because why, why else are you buying it? Well, because it's good. For those of us that use it, we love it. Okay, so what we're gonna do, this is gonna get unwrapped, and because I wanted to show you this, and I can't necessarily do a screen record right away, I am gonna turn on another camera over here, okay? So we can see this boot up. I think we can see that right there, is my hope. Fingers crossed. All right, ready? Is it like Instaboot? Now you get this little screen. Oh yeah, it looks, it's just like pow. Move that a little closer for you guys. You should be able to see that, I think. Back further, up further. I don't know. Maybe we'll go wider. There we go. We'll get that right there. Perfect. That's good. So, simply put, this is what our screen's going to look like. To use English as the main language, press the return key. Yeah, gives you a little, little vocal return key. Or just so you guys know, you could go down here and just tap on the continue. So select your country. If you are way down here, usually if you hit the first letter, you'll just kind of get to that area. So I'm in Canada. Accessibility, I don't want any of it right now. But if you do have accessibility needs, this is a great place to go in and kind of set that up if, if that's something that you need. Not now. Select your network, I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna connect to that one. You guys don't get to see my password, but I'm gonna just fire it in real quick. Hopefully I remember what it is. I don't, I think I do. I, so many passwords. Come on, do it. And I like that it actually came out of the box with almost full charge. Okay, so there it is. Um, for those of you that are concerned with any kind of data and privacy through Apple, definitely read this. There's a little learn more right here. If you really wanna get into it and figure out what information is used for what purposes. They're pretty transparent in regards to that, which I actually like. It's a big reason that I actually like the Apple products. So I'm gonna hit continue right here. Migration assistant. So normally, this is where you and I would transfer from a Mac, Time Machine, Backup, or Startup Disk, right? So we can transfer from a Mac machine or Time Machine or whatever. So if we hit continue here, because and you could do it from a Windows computer too. Just be aware, there may be a little bit more limitations as to what's gonna actually move across. But we're gonna do it from a Mac, right? We're gonna come here, connect AC power. So it says this could take a little bit of time. So let's actually connect the power. Luckily for you and I, I've got power up here. All right, this is going into this, this is going into this. All right, transfer information to this Mac. Select a Mac, Time Machine Backup, or other. So we can do it from a Mac or a Time Machine. I'm gonna actually do it from my old Mac. So give me a sec while I go grab it, hold on. Okay, so the other Mac is turned on. I turned it on, it's in the other room. Um, select a Mac. Make sure that the other Mac, Time Capsule, or Disk, that you are transferring from is connected to the same network. All right, I'm with you. Hold on one more sec. Okay, here it is, it's here, it's happening. Now you could do a direct connection between the two and it might help if this one was actually on the network. I guess that helps since it decided to disconnect. Okay. Oh, here it is, see this? I didn't even read this. When transferring from another Mac, open the Migration Assistant app on the Utilities folder in the Mac and send to another Mac. All right, so we're gonna do that. Migration Assistant. Okay. And you can either go into the Utilities or you can search with Spotlight, just Migration Assistant. And we're gonna go to another Mac. I'm gonna turn this so you guys maybe can see that. See that right there? to another Mac, right, migration, hit continue. Your Mac is running on battery power. It is strongly recommended that you connect. And I will, I will connect once I get this going. So we're gonna hit continue. So now you'll see over here, oops, 
you'll see over here that it actually has Greg's MacBook. So I'm gonna hit continue. The system needs to be updated, so we're gonna say update. And at this point in time, because this needs to have the newest update, we're gonna just kinda of hang tight with you guys and, and we'll be back. Okay, so what happens is you get a little code that shows up on both, and just to make sure that you got the right machines talking to each other, and it comes up here and you'll see here that it's asking you what you wanna transfer, because you don't need to transfer everything. Especially on my setup, this has a bigger hard drive than this one, so there may be some things that I don't wanna move over, especially in regards to Possibly as it's calculating, maybe some of the applications I don't wanna move over just cause they may be big. I have a program like Parallels that runs on here, which my hope is I can tell it not to move that because it won't be compatible on this machine anyways. So this, this also takes a little bit of time as it's trying to figure out what to move. All right, so you'll see here, it's got this set up to do a transfer. Uh, 336, or th figures 376 gigs coming across. So. This one is the big one, application parallels. We're gonna say no to that because we don't need that coming down. And, but you can kind of go through here, right? Desktop, documents, and we can transfer any of this stuff if we want. Anything for me, I'm not gonna transfer this stuff because it should come down, because I have iCloud, it should come down through that. So it shouldn't be really an issue. I'm not gonna transfer, like I said, parallels at all because I don't think that'll work. Uh, pictures I'm not gonna do because again, the iCloud should take care of that. And uh, as far as I know, that should be it. Now I've only got 129 gigs. So we're gonna hit continue. Create a secure password. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that right here. Continue, agree, agree. And now, and now we sit back and wait. That's it, we wait. Once this is all transferred, it should restart. What I would do is just validate, go into, let's say the app store on your new computer to check to see if there are any updates available, especially if you're moving from like an older operating system to a newer operating system. I'd also check with the actual operating system itself just to make sure that it is updated. So inside your system preferences, you can actually check inside there to see if there's, a, to see if there's an update. That's, that's kind of it. So nice and easy, and it could be even easier if you're not actually transferring. All you're gonna do is hit that setup as new and just kind of float through. You may have to add your Apple ID if you have one or create one if you don't, but it's, it's, not, it's not too bad. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave you there. This, uh, this, this will be, it says one hour, 45 minutes. That's not too bad. Okay, I'm gonna leave you there. Uh, more videos coming up on this machine as we actually put it up against this machine for performance. Yeah, kind of exciting. All right, guys, I'm out. Later.